Fire control computers solve fire control problems. Their solutions depend upon own ship's course and speed, target's range, target's bearing, target's course and speed, wind speed and direction, initial shell velocity, and other factors up to a possible total of 25. The factors occur simultaneously, and many are constantly changing. But the computer continuously and instantly solves the problem and sends the answer to the guns as train and elevation orders. A computer cannot do this without men. For example, men operate the director, which sends target range and bearing to the computer. And here at the computer, other men set in other information. Obviously, computer accuracy depends on the quality of the information it receives. And that depends on the skill and understanding of the men. If you look inside a computer, you find an impressive assembly of basic mechanisms. Some of them are duplicated many times in one computer. A first step toward understanding a computer is understanding these mechanisms. This film, part one, describes four of them. Shafts are commonly used to carry values throughout a computer. One revolution of a shaft is assigned a numerical value. If rotation in one direction is designated as positive, then opposite rotation is negative. The nature of shaft values can be demonstrated with a rack and pinion. In this case, the rack is calibrated so that one revolution in this direction represents plus 10. Continuing with a half revolution, shaft value now is plus 15. Another half revolution making a total of two revolutions from the zero position, and shaft value is plus 20. Now add minus two by one-fifth turn in the opposite direction. The result, of course, is 18. Similarly, two complete revolutions in the minus direction subtract 20. And in this case, the result is minus two. The rack and pinion were used here to demonstrate the nature of shaft values. In practice, racks and pinions may be used to translate shaft values to corresponding linear movement. Or the rack may transmit values to the shaft. Gears are usually used to transfer values from one shaft to another. With a gear ratio of one to one, the numerical value remains unchanged, but rotation is reversed. With gears of different sizes, shaft values may be multiplied or divided by a constant. With this gear ratio of two to one, one revolution of the driving shaft causes two revolutions of the driven shaft. Cams may be used as computing mechanisms. Ordinarily, we think of a cam as a mechanism that changes a simple motion, such as rotation, to an irregular or intermittent motion. All cams have a working surface and a follower. The working surface may be an outside edge like this, or it may be the walls of a groove. The follower may be a roller, a ball, a pin, or some other device that slides or rolls on the working surface. Different working surfaces are designed to do different jobs. 
To show in a general way how working surfaces are designed, suppose we take as an example the problem of changing rotary motion to corresponding linear motion. Let's say that one shaft rotation is assigned a value of 10. For a shaft value of 1, suppose we want the follower to move this distance. Then for a shaft value of 2, the follower must move twice as far. 3 times for 3, and so on. The purpose is to establish the shape of the working surface for this particular problem.